got your supplements and functional foods Legal developments and greedy news Education, inspiration, entertainment Inside of the afternoon Hello and welcome to another edition of Insider in the Afternoon I am your uh, your co-host today, Todd Runstead. Ola is in Hawaii, so the cofactors are gone, but we have something better. This is the multivitamins. That's right. Me, Josh Long, and uh, Duffy Hayes. Josh, Duffy, how are you guys today? Hey, buddy. We're well. Hey, Todd. Thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah. So good stuff. So what we're going to do here today, kids, is uh, we're going to do about a 10 minute lightning round of uh, stories that we have recently published, stories that we're working on and stories that we're just going to talk about. Maybe we're not going to write a story. It's just going to be like a like a just a lightning round of news bits. And um, and then when it's over, we have some really good uh, regulatory uh, feature from our friend Asa Waldstein. And then the end of it. Oh, we are bringing the love, people. We're bringing the love. We have Zev Ziegler from Lyco Red. You really want to stick around for that. It's going to be fantastic. So um, first off, I just wanted to point out, uh, I, this just came across my uh, the wires this morning, uh, PLT Health Solutions. Um, they announced today that their Earth Light, which is a vitamin D from mushrooms, um, it just received regulatory approval from the Brazilian Health regulatory agency. Um, and so then it allows it uh, in, you know, in that market in a broad range of food, beverages, and sups. I think that's pretty cool. It's also, um, you, you don't, you get a lot out of the ingredients. So it's really inexpensive. Vitamin D is or has already, you know, has always been known as an inexpensive uh, ingredient. And so this just uh, provides another way if you're looking for a, a, a vegan option because normally vitamin D three comes from uh, the wool from sheep lanolin. And uh, so certain vegetarians might not like that. Um, so that's it for that. I also wanted to, uh, to a little, uh, uh, um, uh, a legal and regulatory proceedings just got resolved and it was BGG world. Um, they, they uh, uh, re received a, uh, uh, a decision, um, they were sued by American River Nutrition and uh, American River Nutrition lost. It was, it was all about um, uh, how they produce, how BGG uh, produces uh, their Theraprime uh, vitamin E. They're the only uh, company that gets it from uh, three different sources, Anato, Rice Bran, and Palm. And so uh, American River had, had sued them for um, patent infringement and they lost. So BGG, we also, uh, we interviewed uh, both outgoing BGG uh, uh, CEO uh, of, of the North Americas uh, or, or the Americas, Bob Capelli, as well as incoming CEO, Shaheen Majid. That's gonna happen on an upcoming uh, issue uh, edition here uh, of Insider in the Afternoon. So stick around for that kids in the weeks to come. Um, and, you know, let's just jump right into some of these uh, legal proceedings. This is really interesting. Now, Duffy and Josh, you guys both wrote separate stories, but I think taken together, it's a really interesting story about supplement industry execs going in the slammer, going in the pokey, getting sent up river. I mean, this isn't a fine. This isn't a slap on the wrist. I mean, okay, so Josh, first of all, Blackstone, with a name like Blackstone, of course you're going down the river. Um, the co-founder was imprisoned for selling steroids. Like, what's that about? Um, well, several people were indicted um, in the case, including the two co-founders, uh, PJ Braun and Aaron Singerman. And uh, interestingly enough, actually, Mr. Singerman, um, years later, founded a uh, sports supplement company called Redcon One, which is... I believe the court filing said it's the fastest growing sports supplement company in history. I have no way to verify that. It's not a public company. Um, I, I just raised that issue because that company is um, still around. They had nothing to do with these allegations, just to be clear. Um, they were not indicted. They were not charged with any wrongdoing. The Mr. Singerman, who was recently uh, sentenced, also co-founded that company um, subsequent to leaving uh, Blackstone Labs. But um, he was sentenced to 54 months in prison, which is a fairly significant amount of time when you look at other cases. Look right. at 
court filings from his attorneys, and they were, you know, asking the court to impose a, you know, a light, lighter sentence, probably than the 54 months. And a lot of the cases that involve sales of illegal products marketed as supplements, a lot of times they get, uh, you know, uh, either a light prison sentence or, you know, probation even in, in a lot of cases. So it was right. a significant time. Um, Duffy, do you want to weigh in there? Um, well, I... I was a related, I mean, not related to what Josh was writing about, but Josh and I write about these uh, indictments and investigations in our industry all the time. And um, FDA hopes they're deterrence to other people. And actually, the story that I recently wrote wasn't an executive per se, uh, like Josh's Blackstone story, but uh, someone who just kind of jumped in uh, as a side job uh, in 2011, importing uh, supplement ingredients from China. This was a guy, uh, his name is Leandro Rodriguez. He's of Allentown, Pennsylvania, and he was a truck driver. And he sort of discovered that there's vast amounts of money to be made by importing rebranded drugs, uh, misbranded, I should say. Uh, and so essentially there was a big indictment in, in uh, 2019, him and three other, and two other men uh, were accused of bringing dangerous drugs into the country and then marketing them as all natural weight loss supplements. So, uh, yeah. And that, that was, that was Cybutramine, right? The, the yeah, brand name is uh, Meridia, right? Yeah, re- exactly. Abbott had pulled the, pulled it in 2010, I believe, uh, due to cardiovascular events and strokes. Uh, it was marketed as a weight loss <laughs> and it probably works, but it was, it's quite dangerous. And uh, so this truck driver started a side business and made quite a bit of money actually. And uh, so he got a year and a half Um so he got quite a lengthy sentence. And like I said, this is something that they hope to use as a deterrent to other people. Um, obviously, yeah. that's kind of the point of these investigations. Right. And, and so the, just the last question on these legal proceedings, is it is it you're going up the river or down the river? What is that? How do you mean? Well, you know, like when you get sent to prison, you're going oh. up the river. <laughs> you're getting sent down the river. What is that? You're up, the, you're up the creek for sure. Up the, you're up the creek. <laughs> well said, Duffy. Love it. Well said. Thank you. Nice, <laughs> nice. Point for Duffy on that one. So, uh, hey, Josh, I, I want to get back to uh, one other interesting um, thing. There was uh, an FDA comment period about n acetylcysteine. There's a lot of kerfuffle about that. Uh, FDA had said that even though it's been on the market since pre Deshay. Uh, uh, oh, no, now we want it to be pulled off the market. And so Amazon has followed up with FDA's recommendation. The rest of the industry, uh, you know, as they tend to do uh, with the FDA, carry on. Um, so, so, but what's happening with that right now, with the comment period? And there's a lawsuit, right? Yes, the comment period. Uh, FDA asked for comments by, I believe it was January 25th. The docket still is open. They just wanted it. They wanted the comments by a specific deadline in late January to be, quote, timely in their consideration of the comments. I don't know exactly what timely means in FDA land. Um, our deadlines are 40 years. FDAs. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but uh, that docket remains open. Uh, last I checked, they had received uh, 21 comments from consumers, industry associations. We know them all. Um, pharmaceutical interests and, uh, you know, some other stakeholders. Um, so where we are with that is uh, we're waiting to hear, you know, what FDA is going to do. That could be coming in weeks, months, years, decades, uh, who the heck knows. Meanwhile, we have the lawsuit filed by the Natural Products Association and just yesterday did an update. They are going to amend their lawsuit um, in the next several weeks. Uh, therefore, the Department of Justice doesn't have to answer their initial complaint. What that exactly means, what's going to be in their amended lawsuit remains to be seen, but we'll be reporting on that in the next month and find out what DOJ has to say about the lawsuit. Typically, when they answer a lawsuit, you know, there's not a lot of fascinating, substantive issues that are raised, but sometimes you get a you get a sense of, um, you know, the motions are going to file down the road to try to dismiss the case. Yeah. All right. That's good. All right. Hey, you know, we only got about one more minute. And so let's talk about um, the DNA barcoding story. Now, this is fascinating. This was the news of the supplement industry. What was it like? I don't know, three or four or five years ago, something like that. Um, it, uh, Schneiderman, the attorney general of New York, um, he was involved in it. Uh, they And so the, the story was they, they used DNA barcoding to... Uh, 
not fit for purpose, as Mark Blumenthal from the American Botanical Council uh, would has had it. And uh, so it seems like uh, our buddy Mark was vindicated there. What's the story? What's the update on that, Josh? Uh, I mean, I mean, the the, the, the the bombshell piece was about this um, this one uh, academic, uh, Dr. Newmaster, um, questioning um, the validity of his research, not just the supplement paper, but several other papers. Um, you know, the, the article is very in depth. I'm not. I, I wouldn't do a good job summarizing, but, but the bottom line is one of the papers that's at issue is that supplement paper that was the DNA barcoding paper on several supplements, which is what inspired uh, the, the Schneiderman investigation, which also was based on DNA barcoding. Um, so industry saying, you know, the, the one investigation that inspired Schneiderman was, was bunk, was debunked, essentially. Right, right. That is really quite nuts. So, uh, you know, and, and I think that's all we have the time for right now. Speaking of the legal and regulatory issue, we're going to cut right now to um, to uh, Asa Waldstein, who has uh, just a three minute little uh, video update here on anxiety claims and what trips companies up and how you can surmount them. So, Charlie, take that away right now and let's see what uh, Ace has got to uh, got to say. Hello everyone, my name is Asa Waldstein and I love reading FDA warning letters. Anxiety claims enforcement in FDA warning letters was up 95% in 2021 over the previous year. Now this is a clear sign of enforcement trends. We really wanna pay attention to any use of anxiety on any of our online marketing. So let's break this down a little bit. Of the 40 FDA anxiety related warning letters in 2021, 30 of them or 75% of them included the words anxiety and depression. Now this shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone who's been paying attention and following enforcement trends because earlier in 2021, the FDA sent out 10 warning letters in one day to companies making anxiety and depression claims. That's a clear sign of their enforcement priorities. Now, of these 40 warning letters in 2021, 45% of them included claims made on social media. Now, I have to say that I'm pretty surprised by that number. I would have thought that this would have been higher because it seems like almost every FDA warning letter I read includes social media. The real important point here is that the FDA is paying close attention to claims made on social media. So it's very, very important to not only not use words like anxiety and other high-risk buzzwords in your social media, but go back and clean up old social media posts. Now, 10% of the warning letters included claims made in hashtags. So this is about, this is four of the 40 warning letters in 2021 that included anxiety. 10% of them included hashtag claims and 25% of them included claims made in testimonials or product reviews. Now, I expect this number to increase. So expect to see in 2022 and beyond more warning letters citing claims made not only in hashtags, but testimonials and product reviews. Now, the, the FDA, they look at the 30,000 foot view of a company's complete online persona. Now, one claim may not attract a warning letter, but when this claim is attached to a claim made on social media, claim made on YouTube, claim made on Amazon, or claim made in blogs, they're pieced together for one big picture of non-compliance. Now, it's worth noting that the 2021 warning letters did not include the term occasional anxiousness or occasional anxiety, which, if substantiated, is often considered to not be a disease claim. Now, I, as many of you, uh, now as many of you know, I have a risk scale. It's called the ACE risk scale for lack of a better word. Now anxiety as a word is rated three and a half out of five on the ASA risk scale. So anything three or above is likely to attract a warning letter. So anything 3.5 or above is a hard no, should never be used in my personal opinion. So as long as we're being truthful and not misleading, here are some possible other alternative words for anxiety. Happy mood support balanced state of mind, mental resilience, support you when things get overwhelming, and help support smiles. Now, once again, I'm Asa Waldstein. I love reading warning letters. Come find me on LinkedIn or YouTube, and let's talk more about enforcement trends. Have a great day. Well, you know what is on our show? Little love, little love. We're going to take it away. Zeb Ziegler, he's the head of global brand and marketing of health at LycoRed. This is a good one, folks. Sit right back, relax, and soak it all in.
Hey, everybody. Uh, we have a really great conversation that's going to happen right now. Uh, it relates to the nutrition industry. It relates to the supply side audience. It happened at Supply Side, and it is taking off around the world. This is really exciting. Um, so the guest we have right now is Zeb Ziegler. Now, he is the head of global brand and marketing uh, for the health division at Lycoread. Zev, how are you today? Todd, thank God. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, Lyco Red, when, there's a couple of things I think about when I think Lyco Red. You know, it's all about nourishing people. Now, I know Lyco Red because of your tomatoes, because I lived for a while back in the late 80s in Hollister, California. They grow lots of tomatoes and walnuts out there. And, and I think you guys get you guys get some of your tomatoes from Hollister, and, uh, which I think is really cool. And, uh, you know, Hollister, it's not the t-shirt company. It's actually a real town and they grow tomatoes and like a red, like a red, like a peen, you know, it comes from there. Um, so I think that's fun. Um, what do you know about tomatoes, Ev? Uh, the number one thing is that there's a lot more to discover, uh, in the 25 years that we've been, uh, working with the tomato, uh, our team, uh, has been cultivating wellness through uh, where nature, science, and humanity meets, uh, rallying big time around uh, our hero fruit, the tomato, uh, and, and fascinating molecules found within that fruit, like lycopene. Like and it is a fruit, ladies and gentlemen. It's not a vegetable. It's got seeds in it, right? I mean, that's the, that's the tell. So I, I, I love how you say lyco red. Uh, is cultivating wellness because you certainly do that. And you do that by encouraging professionals to write an anonymous note of encouragement, appreciation, general positivity to a stranger. That was the letters to a stranger. And so the letters, they're printed and included in mails being delivered to seniors and homeless people. Pretty heartwarming stuff. How'd you come up with that? Yeah, so, so these things don't happen overnight, uh, but, but it actually felt to us very natural that we were the team that would play a role in that. Uh, for the past, I wanna say decade, uh, within our 250 pieces of published clinical research, uh, the majority of our recent uh, publications have landed within uh, either skin health, skin appearance, or sun care, uh, all beauty from within categories. Uh, and Which way before big. the pit, so, so, so way before the pandemic, we, uh, we, our team had uh, been promoting our uh, new publications uh, with influencers uh, in arts and culture uh, by inviting uh, audiences to uh, external audiences to, to write a, a positive note to themselves. And what our team would do is we would send those notes back when they least expected it. So we had uh, some celebs like Tim Robbins and Jack Black help us kick it off. Uh, but this was like, you know, five years ago. And since we got over 18,000 people to write positive notes to a stranger at the Sundance Film Festival at GoPro Mountain Games, we're an annual partner. So, so when the pandemic hit, it was just, you know, we'd already built this, this lovely community of people that wanted to, to show themselves love. And, and it just felt so natural to us that, uh, that we should be the team that, you know, that could just flip it and just instead of writing a note to yourself, why don't we just invite everyone to write notes to, to someone who could really use the love during the, this, uh, this time where, you know, we felt these quarantine divides were kind of separating us and we, we felt that there was room to, to invite our community to support nourishing connections. That is so awesome. So, so did I get that right? Like it, it would start off just like send a letter of positivity, like, to your to yourself, and then you would send it back to them at a later date. Yeah, so we, so that's the history. We 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 it was it was a bit retro in our approach. You know, it was a postcard with a stamp on it uh, that we would you know pre-stamp. Uh, but our team would collect these notes wherever we met to invite people to understand the role of uh, how beauty from within works, uh, and uh, in the same way nutrition and supplementation would work. Uh, to support beauty from within. I mean, how often do we really take the time to write ourselves a love letter on a daily basis? Uh, and so, so the role supplementation has in such a way. Um, and, uh, and, and yeah, that was, that was, you know, that was a, a foundational pillar for us. Um, 
that made it you know easy for us to adapt and, and while other teams were thinking about well what could we be doing to support community we were already doing it so we were just there from day one you know that went since the pandemic began inviting people to now you know let's uh let's take the time to to, to be there for each other man i i love this i can my heart is warming already you know what i really love this is like a little epiphany that came, came to me because i'm in the nutrition business when you say beauty from within to me i think Nutra cosmetics. I think, you know, you pop a pill and inside out beauty, you know, and we're all of a sudden, oh, you know, like people normally think of, of beauty as like something you put on your skin to make it better, but you can, you can consume through the mouth, uh, you know, nutrients that, that make your skin, you know, better that way. But when you just said it, beauty from within, it's like, we all have beauty inside us and we can express it we can give love, we can give positivity, we can radiate our inner joy that isn't just like a vanity play of, you know, beauty skin deep, but it, it's like our soul, it's our heart, but that's the beauty from within. That's awesome. that, 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 That's exactly right. And we like to, we like to suggest that, you know, whether you're, uh, you know, smiling or whether you're showing others kindness, it shows on our skin way more than any makeup we're going to put on. Man, I love that. So you guys have also, you've worked with uh, foodforhungry.org, which is a big food bank in California. And so, and like a red, you, you would add fresh fruit or veggies, you know, to a delivery. And, and, and so then, then there's the letters to a stranger campaign, which you posted on, on the little glow app. And so like on my phone, like there's the cool little, like little glow app and you go in there. Welcome friend. I love this. In any journey, every little step counts. By choosing to make small changes that positively affect your mind, body, and spirit, you've started down the road toward lifelong wellness, powered by Leica Red's hashtag Rethink Beautiful. And then, and then let's see what pops up. We'll give you five activity or pops of positivity per week. Each pop is designed to help you have a more optimistic outlook by encouraging small shifts in your mindset or actions that can positively impact your well-being. I mean, again, just heartwarming stuff, right? I mean, I, I'm I'm just loving, you know, the 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 little glow app. Um, talk a little bit about this little glow app, you know. Like I, I just read a, you know, the, the first couple of things. What else can people, you know, everyone download the little glow app? Um, talk talk to us about that, Seth. Yeah, we'd love to. So so the app was designed uh, to 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 be there with us on our self care journey. Uh, in the same way supplementation would to, uh, to support beauty from within. That's why we call it Little Glow. Uh, you can find Little Glow on the Android uh, store and you can find it uh, on the Apple store. They're both, it's free. Uh, we, we, we launched the app with the intention to invite audiences to take on uh, what we call pops of positivity for their mind, body, and spirit. Uh, and so every week you can get plus minus five pops of positivity to, to, to be with us on our journey. Uh, they can range from breathing techniques to, uh, you know, leaving a book on a bench for another person to take one. Uh, and, you know, we're, we're constantly updating the app. Uh, and with New Year, New You, uh, you know, right around the corner, our intention is to uh, update the app with another 50 new pops of positivity uh, that you can take on to start the calendar new year. You know, that's, I, I, again, heartwarming, heart, warm, you know, just really beautiful stuff. When, you know, you, you talk about nourishing our bonds, you know, mind, body, spirit, physical, mental, spirituality, and, you know, not to, not to bring us too far out of the clouds, but also nutritionally, you know, who didn't put on the COVID-19 pounds? I put on COVID-10, you know, it's like, and, and comorbidities are a problem with COVID, you know, like these are nutrition based conditions, you know, you don't hear enough about nutrition as it relates to COVID, you know, everyone's about, you know, the vaccine and the mask, you know, all well and good, but it's like, if, if you didn't have cardio conditions or diabetes or obesity, you know, you're going to fare better than, than, than if you did, you know, and these are all nutrition based solutions, right? I mean, and uh, it, 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 so, so it's all coming from a nutrition uh, mindset, and, uh, and 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 the majority of our research and science has also been established through the nutrition and food space. 
Uh, so, so for us, we, you know, we, when, when we looked at, uh, you know, what aligns well with our core, our, where we play a role in cultivating wellness, um, our, our team felt that, um, it, it, you know, it doesn't just, uh, it's, just, it's not just the work we do on the body, to your point, it's a little bit, it's, it's, it's not just wellness, it's inner wellness. Uh, and, and, and that starts with our thoughts that manifests into our words and that manifests into our actions. And yeah. I love that. And, and so then there was this cool continuation at Supply Side West uh, in Vegas in October, um, where Lycopene, you guys continued your Letters to a Stranger campaign in partnership with the, uh, the New York Common Pantry. What happened? So uh, we approached the Supply Side West team and we, we started a conversation pretty early in the year. And the conversation was around this idea of uh, how can we maintain this, what we like to call, quote unquote, not only for profit energy. Uh, and the idea we had was that instead of having a booth at this year's show after two years of everyone kind of still getting in the hang of what it feels like to be face to face again with others, our, our ask of the team was, hey, can we just join forces here and just go do some social good this year instead? So instead of uh, telling us, telling you about us, a team that you've heard of probably many times in our little industry, uh, you know, for, for one year, we said if there was ever a year where we can maybe replace that budget and just instead, let's just do some good together, uh, this was the year to do it. So, so, we, so we got some buy-in from the show team, from the Supply Side West show team, uh, some lovely people, Carrie and Laurel, I don't know if you know them, but they're like wonderful humans. And, uh, and they said, yeah, we'll take you up on that. So, so we recommended this idea of, uh, of a display that, that showcased uh, all the notes that were written during the pandemic on a rock. Right? Yeah. And, and this, uh, this we, so we called it a U-Rock exhibit. And, uh, and the U-Rock exhibit displayed, uh, you know, the, it, it, was des- it was ultimately designed for one thing. It was to showcase that, you know, well, you know, the natural inclination for all of us is, is to be busy and to think that, you know, we, you know, we need to get to the meet, next meeting. Uh, taking a second to show ourselves love can make a lot of difference in the, in, the, in, in the next bit of conversation we have with ourselves and with others. Uh, so, so, so inviting uh, this, this moment of positivity, a moment where we can just invite people to just enjoy some of the words that were written, the majority of them, the words that were written were written from our industry. And, uh, and, and, and once they were nourished and, and, and took a minute to kind of really reflect on, uh, on, 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 you know, and take stock for even one second and maybe even just in thought alone what they had, we then invited uh, show guests to, to write a positive note to another that we would then make sure uh, was uh, later transcribed from a wall that we had displayed in our uh, exhibit uh, to, to someone who, who needs it. Um, and we, 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 had a, we had a frame, we had a, a red frame that was maybe, I don't know, I wanna say like a seven by seven frame uh, that got filled up within the first hour of being at the show. And while we didn't expect that we would even get that many responses during the show of people wanting to write, uh, we ended up having to open up the back wall of our exhibit in which we got over 500 people on the show to write over a day and a half uh, some positive notes to, to a stranger. And what we then did is we transcribed every single note that was written from show uh, attendees, exhibitors, exhibitees. Uh, and we made sure that uh, to kick off the holiday season, each note was placed on a postcard safely uh, through a partnership with the New York Common Pantry to make sure that uh, someone who needed it would get the love. I'm almost speechless, Zev. I mean, this is, you know what I really like about this is you're not like, you're not a finished product brand that you're trying to like, you know, sell love on a food or a, or a, or a beverage, you know, as, as sort of like, like a, you know, a soft marketing, warm and fuzziness. Oh, and there's good nutrition in here too. Like this is the B2B channel. And so you're just like straight up spreading the love. 
you know, and, uh, you know, anyone who knows anything about business, it's like, you know, human relationships count and they matter. And sure, you know, you know, customer service is good and price is good, but it all comes down to, to people and love. And you guys are just sharing the love. It's true. We are. And I'll say that, you know, we are sharing the love, but again, we're doing it through what we call a not only for profit model. And, uh, and for us, you know, we are, to your point, a profitable company like everyone else. And we invite all teams in our space to, to start having a conversation around where that line is for them to be inviting a not only for profit uh, conversation in the same way that most of our B2B teams on the left and right of us and every one of these shows would, uh, you know, have a conversation between operations and sales for forecasting. And, and we want a genuine we want to invite a genuine conversation into all of our DNAs that looks at, you know, how not just with dollars, but with thoughts, we can all together do our part. And, you know, and this just for us just seemed to be the right fit for us. Yeah, it's beautiful. So that's a story with Lyco Red, beauty from within in a way that is not Nutra Cosmetics people, but the beauty from within. Love it. Zev Ziegler, thank you for joining us. He is, you are the head of global brand and marketing in the health division there at Lyco Red. Thanks, Zev, man. I, I feel I feel better. I feel beautiful. I feel loved. This is this is really great. Thanks. So, so, and I hope it's okay, Todd, to make one plug that if you yeah. uh, feel uh, inspired, I advise everyone here to go to the Little Glow app landing page. And if you haven't had a chance to write a positive note yet to a stranger, take this moment in time to do so. Uh, you can, you know, simply land on littleglowapp.com and you'll notice very shortly after scrolling down a, a place where you can take two minutes of your life to write a positive note to someone who could use the love and we promise to make sure someone will get it. Love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Zev, like I read, mwah. keep going, man. Really appreciate you and your thoughts and the company and the mission and the nutrition. Let's not forget about that. All those uh, fine bioactives inside the tomato fruit. So um, that's it for from here. Um, thanks again, Zev. Good talking to you. We'll catch you again. Later.